So back at the airport, they have a different check-in gate for every airline. It's um, not necessary to get here more than uh, an hour or two ahead of time for a domestic flight. It's a very small airport. So I had to come to the ticket counter here and pay for my bag. I take credit cards. It was 240 rand. Um, how much per ki kilogram was it? 80 per kilo 80 rand per kilogram so you divide that by 14 to find out US dollars it's pretty easy not a long line there are long lines here in some places the service was really cool they can protect your bag by wrapping it in plastic you can do that right here at the airport the line and it tells you the numbers of the check-in counters to go to I'm using Rwanda air which is 47 to 60 so that's why I went down to number 60. This is security. I'm in the international terminal. Well, I got through security. <laughs> it was very easy. Just take a laptop and um, iPad out. Very easy to go through. So then you have to go through passport control before you can get to your gate. So there is a lounge here that Priority Pass is good for, so I'm going to hang out in here for an hour while I'm waiting. I am the 111 going to Harare. My favorite for South Africa. I love Priority Pass. So that's my plane, it just arrived. change here in Zimbabwe so uh, a lot of people got off here and now we're letting on more people for Rwanda. Arrived at Kigali, Rwanda. We go down the stairs from the airplane and then walk over to the airport. Baggage claim, our bags are arriving. Oops, sorry. It's a pretty small airport. Passport control is really fast. You just tell them you got your visa and they put it on your passport. Get out here and the guys wait for you with their signs right here. Hi, Timothy. <laughs> so we're driving through Kigali um, at night. It's a beautiful city and it's, it's lit. I thought it was gonna be a little more rural, but it's, um, it's pretty big city looking. <laughs> Lots of nice hotels here, right? Sure. Lots of good hotels. There are chains like the Serena, Marriott. Ah. Yeah. That's, that's Tim, my guide. Yes. How are you doing, all of you? It's kind of hard to see in the dark. We'll see. Talk to him tomorrow from Volcano National Park. So it is about 12.30 here, I think. Yes. And there are tons of people out on the street. It's like just really hopping here. Because this is a late night kind of city. <laughs> Lots of motorbikes here, motorcycles. It's really late at night here. It's hard to see. I'll try to come back tomorrow. 2.30 in the morning. I'm in Mountain Gorilla View Lodge. I'm in cabin 21. And um, it's, it's a really big, cute cabin. He's gonna come and make me a fire. There's lots of space here. Two king beds, it looks like. And then this is my bathroom, which is cute. We have some toiletries. 
And I'm not sure, um, I guess this is regular running water. So very, very nice room. Big lodge. I can't wait to show you in the daytime because it's really beautiful here. It's a full moon tonight. Beautiful sky. It's my key. Thank you. I know you have a big fire. You see the thing away. <laughs> yes. That's a wood to get me through the night. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He made me a really nice fire. I think this is the only heat I have in the room. <laughs> but it's gonna be lovely tonight. It is morning at Mountain View, Mountain Gorilla View Lodge. And this is what my cottage looked like. I'll just show you in the light. So there are all these little cottages in here. That's really cute. Hey! Good morning. <laughs> well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a little coffee shop at the front and then the check-in counter. This is the front of the lodge. Really pretty. So this is the road in. It was kind of hard to see last night in the dark. It's really rocky for a little while, but then it's paved. Once we turn onto the normal road. Sure. So it's about what 6:30 in the morning, I think. Maybe 6:45. Yeah, about 6:45. Yes. Lots of people out walking. It's crazy because they were all out walking when we got here at three in the morning. some of the facilities that are coming up that are going to take care of uh, the more luxurious uh, travelers that uh, Rwanda is looking upon to have. So we using this kind of facility. This has been built in the last probably six months. Oh. And this is how it will look like. Oh. This is Gorilla's Nest Lodge. Yeah. A few of the genocide sites that you see around the country, there are over 233 sites of this nature around the country. Kwebuka 25 means genocide happened in 1994. This year around, you're celebrating 25 years um, in memory of the genocide victims. So we're turning towards the back headquarters, that's why you see all cars are now converging and all going to one part. This is where we do that, the back headquarters. And the mountain you're seeing ahead is called Mountain Sabino, locally called the old man's teeth. And on this mountain is where all the three countries meet. So we have Uganda for that side, and this side where we are, we're in Rwanda, 
and further on the left is Congo. Ah, okay. So those are the Virunga Mountains. They are they are eight in number. Rwanda shares five of them. The other three are in uh, Congo. Because in Yarugogo, where you we still have the bubbling lava. So these are all inactive volcanic mountains. Oh. So all of these people work the fields? Constructing new ones, which uh, probably one time I'll be sharing with you. Now, all these are workers who are waiting to be called upon to, to come and work. Um, yes. So they're like day workers? Yeah, yeah. Waiting for daily wage. So we are approaching the Rwanda Development Board headquarters. It is here where we meet with all various travelers who are here to do the various activities in the Volcanoes National Park. <laughs> so this is the entrance to Volcanoes National Park. All of the people who are here for the um, gorilla trekking all have to come here for the briefing, no matter where they're staying or who they're here with. The types of vehicles that everyone uses and it's hard to find parking in here, it seems. <laughs> really crowded. And there's a coffee room, so you can have a coffee while you wait. So they do charge for the coffee. It's not complimentary. But it's free. The black coffee is free. <laughs> they These are all the rangers. Do not get too close to the gorilla. Please stay at least 7 meters or 20 feet away to avoid the communication of disease in either direction. And if a gorilla approaches you, slowly back away. If they approach too quickly, look down at the ground and put your hands over your head as a show of submission. Bill, nice to meet you, Bill. From? Uh, from uh, Texas. Oh, Trang from Boston? Nice to meet you. Lainey from Austin, Texas? Austin. Oh, okay. oh. Yeah. <laughs> funny. Nice. Uh, Marianne, and we're from Baltimore. John, Baltimore. I'm Shirai from Japan. Nice to meet you. And Robert from Colorado, and my wife, Kara. Good. Nice to meet you. Feel free. We have juveniles from four to six years old. Those are start to be independent. From six to eight, they're like a teenagers. We call them the sabadir, both males and females. And a female for six years, oh, oh sorry, for eight years old, is not mature to conceive. And the gestation period for them is nine months as units. They can have one baby or a couple of twins. Twins are rare cases. Also, for them to survive is very rare. Because a mom to handle two babies is not easy. So after our briefing, now we caravan in our own cars um, to, I'm not sure where we're going. We're going <laughs> to the start explain. point of the gorillas. <laughs> to the start point. Okay, and it's so, a very bumpy ride. Yeah, it's going to be bumpy. <laughs> so if you have um, neck and back problems, this is probably not the activity for you. That's where it's being just out. <laughs> Almost like a safari. <laughs> we are coming up as well. This is the starting point we got to. So there are different routes. If you can't handle a rocky route like this, there are nicer, softer routes. And the porters can carry you if you really need to be carried. What's your name? Lainey. So I got a porter, Andrew. <laughs> He's going to take care of my backpack. This is so Pick up. 
So they gave me a walking stick too. It's really light, easy to use. They're taking care of me. <laughs> they wanted me to tie it all the way up the ankle so that I don't twist my ankle. Counting on to get these potatoes from this volcanic soil. Very this volcanic soil is a good soil for potatoes. Then a few minutes I'll let you know how to do. Before we see them, we have to take off these bags who contain some food, some drinks. We leave these walking sticks because they can look like squares in front of the gorillas. Going cold just elsewhere. Yeah. Let's move that. Now take off your cam uh, your bags. Take your very things from the bags. The 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 potters will go back with the bags. Then. That one is the boss. If it is called blackberry. Found them even in the forest. Not mean that they one day. It's the mom of that baby. How I know? How I know? Mm -hmm. It's like I, I found you somewhere. I know your trunk. <laughs> if you look at the top of the noses, everyone has different tree. This is the boat, it's called Munyinya. Yeah. No, you don't mind you're here. I was in Jira too. As a young baby, four months old baby, and the one behind is the boss. Make line here. We see the picture of this one. Jo Keep coming. Bill. Robert, come. And he's going to go down. We'll give the, him away. 
is passing like this, go away. Celebrate? Yeah, is she, is she celebrated among the gorillas? No, they're not celebrities. Only they have, they are curious to see the babies, but no celebrities. <laughs> oh, does he not like my camera? How about you GoPro? Oh. that female was like going up yeah. but the time he was shaping it back it was like say don't go not this way you give the weight oh, yeah. The youngest baby, the mom of the twin is here now. Is he crying? Is like I say, don't leave mom. Please don't leave me. Oh, yeah. Thank you. 
Sweetie. We're okay. Don't worry about us. Oh my goodness. Wow. Can you believe this view? Wonderful time at Volcanoes National Park and now we're headed to the hotel to shower and then off to get some lunch and a museum and then off to Uganda for our next trek. This is our home, this Toyota Land Cruiser. It's been very nice. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is the uh, Mountain Gorilla View Lodge where we've been staying last night and now we're off to Uganda. I uh, think that um, once we're done with the gorilla tracking at the volcanoes and we're back here, we normally offer uh, optional activities that travelers can do while, while here. And so having the afternoon at the hotel, they can decide to do a community walk where they go and visit some families or just check out families and how people were way of living around here. If not that, they go out for bird watching. So they identify for them some few birds here and there. Uh, otherwise, the other option activities that they can do, we also have the caves, which they can go and check out and look out for some bats that are in the caves. Uh, there's a cultural dance with the ex poachers that is done with the guardian gorillas. Um, if they're not doing that, then we can go out to check out the market and they see the various foods and the goods that are being sold in the markets that can be done here. So when we got back, they offered a foot massage? Oh yes, so oh, wait, yes. What oh yes, oh yes. The Mountain Gorilla View Lodge, unlike other hospitality facilities around here, mm -hmm. has this exceptional service. Despite the warm water bottles that you have in your bed in the night in the fireplace, they also offer you a free foot massage after you go out track which is very, very exciting and nice. It gives you a very good um, feeling after your trek. And they uh, were offering yeah. to clean my yes. shoes also. Yes, which is also done free of charge. After your trek, they will they'll take your shoes away, clean them for you, so you live very really refreshing. Very nice. It's really a nice hospitality facility. I do really, really recommend it. And uh, it's just unfortunate that we're living a little bit early, but they also have um, very good buffet. The chefs are very good. But so we are turning towards uh, Sunset Town. We are going to stop by uh, Diana Fossey Museum. Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund Museum. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe you will continue to enjoy the, this museum here in the Kasochi Research Center. We do different activities of uh, protecting gorillas. 
Here in the daily protection of Ugolas, we have uh, different teams that help us in the protection of Ugolas. We have a poaching team that use it to make a patrols around the park. They can stop any enemy who can try to enter into the park to disturb mm. Ugolas. Inside the park, we have uh, rangers and trackers who use it to go throwing Ugolas in the, each place they are. Uh, they can handle any threats of Golas. For instance, as you see on this figure, mm -hmm. they are making snares inside the forest. And when the trackers find snares, they remove them before harming Golas. Uh, the snares may be put by some people who want to catch animals, but accidentally they can catch the Golas. Even though it is not allowed. Then here also we do research for gorillas. We can do research about their diets, uh, distribution, interaction among them, and also as we share with them, uh, 90 percent, 98 percent of the energy. We collect the data about their health. Yeah. We can know their diseases. They can be affected by human diseases like respiratory diseases. Uh, also, like other diseases, like diarrhea, there is a transfer of disease. Then, here in the Karasut Research Center, we train the young generations to build them the, their future conservations. Yeah, for instance, here we bring the, the students from the uh, University of Rwanda. Mm. Uh, we train them to do research and uh, we provide the trainings uh, where they work their final thesis here in Karsochi. And this makes them happy and like their activities of protecting Golas and the other biodiversity. Yeah, then in the communities, uh, we develop many projects that help them to be developed themselves and to aware activities of protecting Golas and the other biodiversity of Welcome National Park. Uh, for instance, here uh, we build the schools, hospitals, mm. uh, providing potable water, mm. uh, additional support like cows, sheep, goats, that help them to have the, their needs and also like uh, conservation of gorillas. As uh, these projects develop the from the tourism of gorillas. Mm. Ten percent from tourism of gorillas goes into the community around the Volcan National Park. And mm. this makes them to be happy and like uh, our activities. And uh, when we request them to help us in protecting Golas, they automatically understand and uh, help us. Okay. Then, uh, oh. <laughs> this is the, a brief of our activities. Then uh, we do these activities from different donations. And if you wish to support our activities, you may use the online form or you may use the box there to support our activities. Okay. Then, <laughs> you, you see what? Uh, the one? In case you want to donate. Yeah. <laughs> that's the email and the website. To learn more, yeah. go to gorillafund.org slash gorilla underscore blog. I'll have that on the YouTube. Um, information. We stopped for lunch. There's a pharmacy here <laughs> and um, there's a cafe right next door. <laughs> this is Magano, I think. Hello. Oh, 
over the border at Uganda. Um, I had to show my passport and my visa and get a test for Ebola. All it is is they check uh, your temperature. Um, and it was pretty easy. I just walked through while Tim is getting the car cleared. So I'm waiting on the Uganda side for him. And uh, we are now driving on the left side of the road and we have lost an hour in time change in Uganda. the market Martin Sabino where we were tracking the gorillas from today. So this is a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Somebody give you a banana. He doesn't seem to care that we're here at all. Mm, now he's looking at us. <laughs> this is beautiful. Right after this, we're going to hit a very bumpy road, he said. So this is my last break. <laughs> Lots of goats. Hey! Oh. <laughs>
this is the impenetrable forest right in front of us here with all those trees. So we're there. Caper. Yeah, getting into the park, I need to, we need to register ourselves. Then the car, the company that we have come through. Because you're going to use green impenetrable forest, you're going to move through the Rohesia, which is the southern sector of the park, as you go further to the northern part. Mm, okay. Yeah. So we are now registering in. And remember that we have wildlife along the way. Just in case of any troubles or in case of break, car breakdowns, mm. they, they know that. You can also get, get a problem. Yes. So this will be the right. to show you the trees here in this forest. It's so pretty and there's wildlife everywhere in here and it smells delicious. Penetrating through, you need to have a machete for you to walk through this forest. Um, so that's why it's impenetrable. Yeah, impenetrable. It's called a black and white clubbers monkey. The Rohesia sector, and we do the same thing again. Skip to lines, don't write. Yeah, this is now night shift now. You can start your trek from here, but that's not where we are going. black tea here. We're a little bit outside of the forest now trying to get to our hotel. Back a lot. 
they were expected you here. <laughs> Orange juice, I think. Is that orange juice? Passion juice. Passion juice, thank you. How did six today? It's outside, it's our lobby. At the same time, you can enjoy your drinks. And the first thing you bring the international park, go out to the dark. Also, this is our reception. The same time as a bar, you can order a drink of choice. Outside, you have walking sticks, they are free of charge. You can use them tomorrow as a for trucking. They may act as support. Also, our restaurant can be accessed to it. At the gate, you turn your left hand side, you access the restaurant. So, tomorrow, as we are going for trucking, you shall be at Camp Arabia Park Lunch and have a hot breakfast. Before you leave, thank you. So, I shall be getting you out of the restaurant. Thank you. 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 And turning down the mosquito nets. In the case of the service, in a room there is a paper that shows either you need spray or no. In the case you need the service, as long as for dinner, you have to leave the key at reception here for the housekeepers to go back to the room to do the service. Okay. The dinner menu. Dinner menu. It's a four course meal. So this is my room, room six. Oh, thank you. Okay, here's my room. They have these mosquito nets here and you can request um, to have it sprayed during dinner for mosquitoes. And then they come in for turn down service while you're at dinner and put down the mosquito nets. I am definitely going to do that. <laughs> And there's a little closet here. So this is the bathroom. Um, it's pretty, pretty basic. And they have a shower that has hot water. And they do have some toiletries here. Looks like conditioner, shampoo, and shower gel, which is nice. Not everybody has those here. Oh, I needed this. It's been a long day. This is my little room, room six. I'm just a short walk from the lobby. I don't know if you can see the moon tonight is just beautiful. <laughs> this is the restaurant. And then, um, drink? Uh, yeah. This is the first starter. And this is the French onion soup. I had beef medallions tonight. What did you get? <laughs> oh, fish. Got a banana split for dessert. I totally forgot about it. We have to order a box lunch for our trek tomorrow. And then also we order our breakfast for before we leave. Okay, so they've turned down my bed and they put the mosquito netting up. And they sprayed, you can smell it, but I also put like a, they had a air freshener to plug in. I did that. So I guess uh, it's bedtime. I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning from Uganda. This is the view from my door, my um, cottage. It's not exactly a cottage, but um, this is my room, number six here. We have a little balcony and then steps down. Hello. Hello bright and early <laughs> so you can see um, they have walls right next to each other but just outdoor hallways it's really lovely out here hope you can hear the sounds <laughs> they do offer massages when you get back little outdoor lobby area you can see it's really pretty out here there are mosquitoes um, I sprayed this morning on all of my open areas and 
you tuck your <coughs> pants legs into your socks, try to cover all of your open skin. I didn't see the back of my key last night. It was the gorilla. Cute. Okay, I might be able to see something more. We're going into breakfast. We ordered last night, so they know what we wanted. Ooh. And so I have a little buffet here. Uh, let me look outside for a second here. Uh-huh, that's good. So this is outside the restaurant, so it's right next door to that lobby area. So you see this mountain behind us? That's where we climb up into the impenetrable forest to uh, see the gorillas. The ladies I talked to last night went all the way to the top for hours and hours looking. Uh, they use machetes to get through the forest and it is hard. They will carry you for 300 to $500, which I am looking forward to, hopefully. Um, the one that sounded like Eggs Benedict, it said it came with dodo, and I was concerned that was some kind of bird, but it is the spinach um, stuff here is, the, is called dodo. We so massage all the time, oh. up to date, especially when you come from the trekking, tired, and uh, we do massages. Okay. Uh, various massages with different types mm -hmm. of plates. So we had our breakfast and our dinner included. Yes. Um, do you always do that or there are options? There are options. There are options of bed and breakfast, mm -hmm. and, but mostly, mostly it's on full board. Lunch, dinner, bed, and breakfast. <laughs> okay, well, thank yes. you. I'm okay. excited for our trek today. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest difference between doing the gorilla trek here and doing it in Rwanda is that you're really in there environment here. You're in their home. Um, Rwanda was much more open and flat so pictures were easier. We're gonna be up in these mountains um, so getting photos of the gorillas are gonna be more challenging but uh, and the hike up is much more challenging through the jungle. Um, so that's something to think about when you're trying to choose whether you want to do Uganda or Rwanda. I also wanted to talk about my shoes. So yesterday they retied my shoes because I didn't go all the way up to the ankle uh, with my laces. And it's really important to have good hiking shoes and be laced up really tight on the ankle so you don't twist your ankle, break your, uh, sprain or break your, your ankle. A box <laughs> lunch <laughs> to take on the gorilla track, so that's what they give us. So these roads are pretty rough, so just be prepared for being um, thrown around for a little while. You can fly out of here, um, but it's an hour and a half uh, drive to get to the airport that will take you to Entebbe or um, Chigali. So it's about um, 7.30 in the morning here. It's a beautiful day. I'm wearing a tank top under fleece, and this is... Um, what month are we in? August. We're in August. Oh my gosh. This is my last day, full day in Africa. I'm gonna enjoy every second. Uh, 
uh, it has 300 registered women, uh, but so far we have only 51 that are trained because we have the sewing and weaving programs where these women sit and spend most of their time making different items, different products from African fabrics, African materials. They also have the weaving programs where they weave using uh, natural materials. Uh, we pray that the gorillas are so near so that you could spare some time, maybe come, have more of the dancing and singing there, and look at the different activities the women are doing. You can uh, also have the weaving activities with them, and maybe have uh, some things made for you, and get, get gifts to take back home. Some people call me GG because I'm God the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Two G's. Yeah. Um, on behalf of our organization, Uganda Wildlife Authority, I officially welcome you all for your being with us this morning. You are all most welcome to Bwindi National Park. So here with me here, I have a book where you are going to write down your names. <laughs> <laughs> so the book you are going to write today, the name is written here, Mayambi. It's called the Mayambi. It's called the Mayambi. It's a local name, meaning help someone who helped to rescue. So Moyambi was once part of Mubarak. He left the group when he was still at Black. He went to Solitary Life. Then after Solitary Life, later on he started brand new feelings from other groups to make his own family. So currently now he has eight members. Eight? Eight. So this is the kind of chair that you can get if you want to be carried. I think I need to do that. So now we're caravanning to our entry point with the rest of my group. And I arranged for a helicopter, uh, is what they call the chair, to be lifted through the jungle so I don't hike, um, which is gonna be really fun. It was $350 to get them to carry me for the day. <laughs> Kids all come out and wave at us as we come up. <laughs> like a rural community we've been driving through so a lot of the tours don't go this way um, but the kids come out and greet us everywhere we go they come out and say hi <laughs> the idea of the type of terrain we're on Are we? Oh, not so high today. <laughs> Just 4,500 
757 feet. How is that? So this is a group of uh, about eight of us are going to go out. We meet here at this head and the porters are here to meet us. And that's my, my special VIP yeah, helicopter is on the way. Waters. <laughs> and uh, you will let me know how many you need. And then I call them for you. And then behind you here, I don't introduce them to you. Although we came with them. Uh, the, I'm the man. So feel free to, to, to interact with them. So they'll be part of us. As a parameter organization, that's how the way we operate. We always move the abdomen. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes in the forest we do encounter elephants and uh, some wild gorillas. So they'll help us in case we happen to come across to scare suit. So we are not here for war. We are safe. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So one will be ahead of us, two will be behind. So that's how we we'll move there. And then the porters. You need how many? One each. One's meeting their porters. They're the ones that push and pull you up the mountain. They're very helpful and they carry all our bags. <laughs> so this is my ride. <laughs> He's got my stuff. These are all, are you guys my carriers? I see that. I know, I can manage. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you, I wish you safe time. Thank enjoy, you. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Bye bye. <laughs> This is definitely the way to travel. This is um, 350 US dollars is what we negotiated for the day. And they're gonna take me and you can see these guys all have to walk um, themselves and it's, it gets to be really rough here in the jungles. Now I will have a bird's eye view. Okay, we had a little break. Everybody else needed one. And all of my guys who are carrying me needed one. I have it so easy. <laughs> It's really pretty. So they have to find places where they can have footing for everybody on both sides. It's not so easy on these trails. They did a switch out while we were moving so new people get to, some people get to rest. We have a lot of people working on me today, but this is the way that you can help support the local community too. These guys could uh, appreciate the support. Going up to the group now. They stopped for a water break. Get fresh people on. Now it's going to be a little harder getting through the forest. Taraj back here. <laughs> there, Machete is clearing the way yeah, so that I don't get hit in the head. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> 
They're working very hard to make sure that nothing hits me in the head as we go down. I'm going to switch. I'm going so the rest of the group went a different way. We had to go this way so that we could fit. These guys are working so hard. I feel really bad for them. You can put your head back. <laughs> it's easier sometimes. <laughs> They keep switching out, which is good. So, but the rich people sell chairs and the cotton. They get to a hand at the end of the house. They got to go to the house. Oh, there's a group up there. I guess we caught up to them. I am. I'm taking videos. Has it been hard? <laughs> when we get too close to trees, because <laughs> then they can't get around me. So how's it been? Are you guys okay? Has it been tough? Yep. Oh, good. I'm sorry. Oh, Sometimes we get stuck. Take a sip on water, which will contain for one hour. 
because where we are here is the team of the truckers who have helped us to locate the animals. So there is a lorry, Hello. Hello. family, and Fred. Mm -hmm. Hello. So those are our heroes, those who have been directing us where to pass. You know, for us, we have taken a shortcut. There was an the ice. So we'll be taking the photo of the bush. So feel free to look at the gorillas directly. In case of any aggressive behavior, yeah. we, me and the, the team of the truckers, we know what to do. Okay. We shall let you know. Okay. In the case of the house. So we, we're at the very final part where we're looking for the gorillas. We hear them and we have to leave the porters behind, except we got one to help <laughs> us through the jungle. Yeah. It's 25 kilograms. How many? 25 kilograms. 25. Mm -hmm. He weighs in between 150 to 200 kilograms. Yeah. 200. Okay. 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 The baby? The baby is six months old. Six months old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just uh, besides the arm here. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Stay, Dharma. He's called Chikombe, that is a hand name, someone with a flat effect. <laughs> the gestation period of a gorilla is like two months. <laughs> I think we can change pictures. Yeah, it was it's a shame. are <laughs> <laughs> genetically to us humans. Forty percent of their daily activity is feeding. We feed a lot. And the rest is living and relaxing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
is the food they eat has plenty of water, so there is no need to look for food. Females produce after every three and a half years to four. While breastfeeding her baby, she'll not have time to mate with the silver bag. If one is breastfeeding, yes. Baby's in here, but she, the mom doesn't want us to see her. <laughs> I still don't see the babies. Where? Are you? Oh, there she is. Hi, sweetie. I can see how steep this is going up and down. So from here we're going to move. Uh, we shall move like 200 meters or perhaps maybe out of the forest. That's where we are going to sit and have our lunch. And then before we move, the team of the truckers are going to remain behind here, keep monitoring the animals, such that tomorrow it becomes easy for them to locate them, you'll not see them again. In the case, if you are prepared to give them a token of appreciation, I mean by tipping them, you are free to do it here. Me and... <laughs> the easy life. Yeah. <laughs> nettles, there are stinging nettles in the jungle here, so it's important to cover as much skin as possible. It also stops the mosquitoes from biting you. There are thorns on the trees, so it's good to have gardening gloves or something to protect your hands because you want to grab things for support as you go. It is really um, steep and you have to go up and down in the jungle. They're using machetes to clear the way the whole time. So um, it's, it is a little treacherous out here. But, um, but it's well worth it to see these amazing gorillas in their home habitat and for tipping. So uh, the trackers, um, which leave us up in the mountains, they stay up here tracking the gorillas the whole day. So have um, money to tip them. And then the porters, when we get down to the area where um, we leave the porters, you can tip the porters. And you should also tip your, your main guide. So um, $15, $20 American um, is, is a good amount. That's about 50,000 uh, shillings here. You can see our whole group back here. Sazaika. <laughs> <laughs> 
So this is the only forest where chimpanzees and mountain gorillas live together. We didn't see any chimps though. This is really narrow here. I hope I don't fall down the mountain. <laughs> Let's see how many people are here to make sure I don't die. <laughs> We're going like straight downhill here. We're, we're crossing now. Oops. These guys are amazing. I wish I could take them home. You can see how filthy I am from the jungle. <laughs> It is quite the operation. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Thanks. It got stuck. <laughs> so we're, we're crossing a river and they're clearing the path. It's taking a little time. <laughs> Oh my goodness, there's the river. Careful. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> <laughs> 
Just gonna sit here on the ground and we're on ferns and then have some lunch. Oh. <laughs> just after like three minutes to walk just down. Warming up too and the, uh, the sharks like... The game! <laughs> Everyone tried to get in front of me this time so they they don't have to <laughs> be behind us. <laughs> They're still having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're almost back. <laughs> There's Tim waiting for me. How are you? Fine, fine. I want I wasn't sure if I'd record it, so I'm gonna repeat this. Um, when you go on these treks, there's three times that they uh, kind of stop and expect you to tip. So um, you tip the trackers who are tracking the gorillas up at the top, and then you track, or sorry, then you tip the porters who help you carry your stuff and help you up and down the mountains. I really, really recommend that you get a porter. It helps the community and it helps you. They're fabulous. They're there to do anything for you. <laughs> Hi. Um, and then when you get down to the end, you tip your guide, uh, the main guide. And um, for me, because I had 22 guys carrying me, <laughs> I tipped um, all those guys too. So, um, 50,000 or about 40,000 shillings at this point is about 20, 10 dollars at about 10 dollars. So just keep in mind you can give them 10, 20 dollars an American um, and that's good for them. So we're driving through this uh, rural community out here in the mountains. You can see that the roads are still rough. It's a little treacherous here doing the Uganda um, option for the gorillas, but the Bwindi Forest is just so amazing and beautiful, and you're really seeing the gorillas in their habitat, which is amazing. So we're driving about an hour and a half through the Bwindi uh, Forest still. There's monkeys and baboons. This monkey's here at the gate, a baby.
Good. We're stopping at the visitor's area in Rohingya to stop and go to the bathroom. If you had to go there during this entire time, you would have had to go in the forest, um, which many people did, and I held it. <laughs> so I could go to the real bathroom here. Oh, so there's a gorilla in the tree. You see it? Yeah. It's hard because it's hidden in the leaves, but so the, they stopped us because the gorillas have to cross the road here. They're all about protecting the gorillas. You can see the I can only see a silhouette. I can't see him really well. So those are the tractors again. Trying to just put your camera now like this. Because it's under this tree. You can see it now? You can see the gorillas? Okay. Bye, bye, gorilla. <laughs> yeah, I'm thanking, I'm thanking them for keeping the gorillas and also making sure cats don't jump into them. Yeah. And Gate. Mm. We got to pavement. Yeah. Got this house. Uh, <laughs> okay. to get rid of my shillings and turn them into francs so this gentleman right over the border is giving me um, 1,000, 5,000, 10, uh, 11,000 for my 50,000 yes. shillings. <laughs> okay, thank uh, you. Okay. okay. Immigration office in Uganda and I now have to walk to through no man's land and go to that blue building where I enter Rwanda. I'm on the Rwanda side now, so now I, I'm going to go over here and wait for Tim. That's Chidali, Rwanda. That's where my flight is leaving from in the morning. And I'm still at the hotel that was the um, base of the Hotel Rwanda movie and book. This is where you get your public transportation from. You can see all of the vans and buses. There's ATMs here too. Hotel de Mille Collines. So they check the cars here. Um, I'm not sure what they're checking for, but they're checking underneath and inside. lobby. We had to do a baggage check on the way in. We have a beautiful balcony with the view. I'll go out there in a little bit. So what are you offering? What is it? It's a passion fruit and treat on it. Nice. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Ooh, it's warm. <laughs> Oh, it's delicious. I am all checked in, and this is my room. I got a single. I don't have a very nice view. <laughs> it's the view of the parking lot. 
but this is the city of Tigali. And then the bathroom is right here. Um, it's a nice sink and a shower with some nice shampoo and conditioner. I need to get in it after my day today. Let's see. We have a closet, which I don't have time to unpack, and a nice robe. And a safe. You can do laundry. And let's see if I can find a power outlet somewhere. Hmm, I don't see a power outlet. I'm sure there's one here somewhere. Um, hmm. <laughs> My husband would be so happy to have this magazine here. So this is their complimentary drink basket they give their guests. I found the outlet, it is right here. The housekeeping just came and they wanna do their turn down service already. And though um, I just arrived, but we'll see how they do it. I think it's about five o'clock or six o'clock here. So probably they do this while people are at dinner. So on the top floor of the hotel is the Panorama restaurant and that is where I'm gonna go to dinner tonight. Yes. Hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I, I just need a table for one. So my table for tonight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure where the music is coming from. It looks like there's a lounge below us. They brought me a tuna tartare appetizer. This is my foie gras today with chutney. Mm. Thank you. I, do you remove it? Thank you. Thank you very much. It's beautiful. This is the ribeye steak. And they gave me this huge chocolate mousse. <laughs> Checking out of the Hotel uh, de Mille Collines this morning. It's a beautiful morning. Warm. This is where all the music was coming from last night. I'm not sure what was going on. Hotel. It's about six thirty in the morning here. And I'm heading to the airport to catch my flight back to Cape Town and then on to Budapest. So we're at the Rwanda airport and um, to enter, they want you to stop and they'll search your bags um, and go through your car. So it takes a little while. Make sure that you 
you give yourself enough time to get to the airport and go through the security check. We've arrived at Chigali International Airport in Rwanda. It's pronounced Chigali with the K. Um, and be prepared on the on the uh, searches that you're gonna go through an x-ray and then <clears throat> a dog comes and checks your luggage uh, before you're allowed to get back in the cars and the cars are completely checked also. So it's intense security and you'll have to go through it again here. So at the airport here, um, you wait in a waiting area by a coffee shop until it's time for your boarding. And then you go through security. There are four boarding gates. You're told which gate to go to and um, you board. So you have to listen for your flight. You don't get to come through to the gate until it's time to board. And then you go to your plane. So this is the vehicle that we took to the plane. And now we wait to board. That's our flight. So there are two and two. Air serves uh, breakfast for the morning flight to Harare and then they serve lunch from Harare to Cape Town. You don't actually leave the flight or uh, the plane. Uh, people get off and on but you stay in your seat. So it looks like I did get uh, some stinging nettles um, got me on the gorilla track. It hurts and it has like bumps and a rash. Hopefully it'll just go away, but I'll try to rub some uh, antibiotics on it. We're landing in Harare, Zimbabwe. Change again. They're cleaning up the empty seats. Everybody who was getting off in Harare got off. And then they're going to let everybody in uh, who is going to Cape Town. This is lunch today on our way to Cape Town on Rwandair. Cape Town. 